Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Matt Gear, and this is Matt Gear TV. Thanks for tuning in. This week I've got a little picking exercise for you. Now, when people start playing guitar, uh, you know, if you go to shop, choose a guitar that you like, choose a amp that you like and that you can afford, and probably get chucked in a handful of picks as well if you're lucky. Um, probably the one thing that you don't really think about, you know, you're thinking about making noise, what you're not thinking about so much is technique. What I'm going to talk about today is an exercise uh, that you can use to improve your picking and to focus on your picking. Now, a couple of points to note here. You know, if you're a beginner intermediate, you know, you've probably you can play some chords, maybe play a little bit of lead as well, you know, maybe you know a few scales. What generally happens is when you're learning stuff like that, you're so busy thinking about the scales, playing the right notes. <laughs> that you're not actually thinking about the technique that you're using to do that. So what this is, is this is an exercise um, to enable you to isolate the picking technique and also good technique for your left hand as well. So it's sort of, it's an exercise. Now, what's really important here is um, this is only an exercise. This isn't playing. This is something that you can include as part of your practice routine and I recommend that you do it daily. It's a good warm-up as well, um, but it's not something, you know, the, the perfection of this is not the goal. The idea is, is to get this un, you know, under your fingers, to get your fingers working, warm up a bit, but to use the technique and the improvement of technique that you get from practicing this to play other stuff, to play your lead lines, to imp you know, improve your technique for soloing. Ultimately, nobody's going to come and want to come and watch you or pay to watch you uh, play this sort of stuff. Because to be honest with you, it's quite boring, but really, really useful. And if you can do it, and like I said, you do it five, ten minutes a day every day, actually you'll start to build up some really solid technique and you'll start seeing benefits in the, in the rest of your playing. Okay? So, what this is, this is a very simple two note per string exercise. And it's chromatic, so we're playing starting with the first finger, I'm going to, you can start wherever you want, I'm going to start on the third fret, on the G, and we're playing two notes per string, and it goes like this. That's it. Now, like I said, there's not very much to it, but there's quite a lot of stuff that you need to think about, particularly if you're a beginner, like I said, or an intermediate guitarist. Even if you're a bit more advanced, it's actually really helpful doing stuff like this. Like I said, it's a great warm-up, but it helps you focus just on one thing, which is just the technique. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind here. First of all, I'm using quite a solid pick. This is a Gravity 1.5mm. It's a little beauty. I love it. It's quite chunky. And importantly, it's got next to no bend in it at all. That's rock solid. If you've got a bendy pick, when you put pressure on the string with the pick, what actually happens to start off with is the pick bends. The string doesn't move, you're not picking the string. What you want is a harder pick so that you put some effort in, you put some tension into the pick, you're picking the string. You're, the string's moving, not the pick. If you want to get some softness, actually you can relax your hand, you relax the grip on the pick rather than relying on a softer pick. You can play gently with a hard pick, you can't play hard with a soft pick, okay? So, at least a mil, preferably a mil and a half, you know, the gravity picks are relatively expensive, you know, they're sort of five quid each, I think, but you know, you can get, you can get good picks for, for a lot less than that. So go into your local guitar shop and see what they've got. Now, another thing to focus on is tension. As you try and play these things like this faster, and try and play them better, generally what happens is you it's easy to tense up, okay? And the more tense you get, the more difficult it will be to play, because if you're tense, then you've got to release tension to be able to move. And you know, if you're moving your fingers around on the fretboard, if you're, you know, you've got this kind of death grip on the neck, actually you've got to release that tension before you can move your fingers. So what I say to my students is if you imagine, you know, grip your hands as tight as you can, like you're trying to crush a walnut or something like that 
as hard as you can, everything's tense, you find if you make a fist, you know, your forearms tense, your arms tense, your shoulders tense, everything's tense. Now that's a 10, okay, that's maximum exertion. And if you try to do that on a guitar, you know, you're trying to push your fingers into the fretboard, that's not what you want to try and do. Other end of the spectrum, a nought, you know, is a few too many beers or creme de mont shandies on a Friday night, and you know, you're slumped on the sofa, completely in, the, in front of the TV, that's a naught. You know, asleep. That's a that's a zero. Now, what you want is obviously you can't play guitar with a naught because you've got no tension to actually fret a note. What you want is probably about a four or a five. So with ten being and naught being asleep, you want a four or a five because you want just enough effort and just enough tension in in the fretting hand to fret the note, but not any more than that. Okay. The same goes for the picking hand. You don't want to hold the pick in a vice-like grip either, because what that means is there's no movement of the pick, it bounces over the strings, which isn't what you want. And also, tight fingers, tight hand, tight forearm, tight arm, tight shoulder, everything tenses up. So you want to be relaxed when you're playing. Another analogy I can use here is if you watch a boxer or you know, MMA guy fighting, although they're you know, generally rock-solid muscle, they're actually very relaxed when they're moving around because if you want to go three rounds, you know, uh, ten three minute rounds and you're all tense, you can tie yourself out in no time at all. Actually, these guys are really loose moving around, and that's what you're the sort of feeling that you want to get when you're playing guitar nice, relaxed. The more relaxed you are, the easier you'll find this. So, this technique and this exercise is a really good way to focus on that. So, I'm just going to look at the picking just for one minute, okay? So, got my pick, not too much of the pick showing. Hopefully you can see that. And it's just going to sit on the string here. Now, I'm trying to get both the fretting hand and the picking hand here on this close-up camera so you can see what's going on with both hands at the same time. Because this is about coordinating as well. Obviously, you want your pick to come down and up at the same time that your fingers are going down and up on the strings. Otherwise, it's all out of sync and your picking is going to be bad. So what we're going to do, again, just running this really slowly, nice and relaxed, watch my right hand, my picking hand, as I'm picking on the strings higher up, okay? This one thing to think about this time. So I'm picking down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and on the way back up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so that's alternate picking, that's what's known as alternate picking. A down follows an up, and an up follows a down, no matter what. So you just get into this motion, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and you keep doing that all day, okay? So there's a lot of guitarists who use that. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's just a particular technique that you can learn, and that's what you can do to start off with. So strict alternate picking, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, what you hopefully notice with my right hand is as I move down the guitar, I'm not anchoring my wrist on the guitar and then kind of bending at the wrist to get to these higher strings here. What I'm doing is actually all of my arm is moving down so that that angle with my right arm is the same. I'm going to get a bit of a close-up close -up shot here. So what I want to do is as I move down, the whole arm is moving up and down, up and down. Now the reason for that is if I pivot on my wrist, I've got a particular angle between my pick and the string. Here, if I just rotate my wrist down and try and pick the top string, then actually the angle between the pick and the string is very different. I want that same angle, so I want my hand in the same position. So it's moving down, and actually, you know, the whole arm, forearm, shoulders coming down a little bit as well. It's not just about the wrist, so there's something else to think about. So, what are we thinking about so far? Thinking about relaxation, it's a four, not a ten, not a naught, and that's left hand and right hand. I'm moving my right arm down to accommodate picking on the higher strings. And what I'm also doing is I'm picking alternate, alternate picking, down up, down up. Okay, so that's job number one, and like I said, to start off with using fingers one and two. Now, 
Once you've done that, you can mix this up. So we're now going to use fingers two and three, which you'll find is a little bit more difficult. And then fingers three and four, so ring finger and pinky, which is even more difficult, okay? So you've got three exercise, yeah, same exercise, but fingers one and two, fingers two and three, fingers three and four. So, again, what I do with that is practice that as a warm-up. Practice it really slowly to start off with. So you can feel everything that's going on, and you can monitor yourself as you're doing it. So you can monitor your relaxation, you can feel what the right hand's doing, you can feel the tension in the left hand, you can move up the fretboard, But it's just getting that movement on the right hand, movement on the left hand going. If you've got a metronome, set the metronome, do it to that. That's a good way, and a good way as well of measuring your progress and see how you're getting on. Because you can start slowly and each day maybe you can add another BPM to it and gradually work your way up. Don't try and play fast just to play fast because if you can't play it right slowly, you've won't play it right fast. You've got to get it right to start off with. Once you've done all of that, <coughs> I know I've been talking a lot, but this stuff's quite important to get right, because if you can do this, your fundamental technique that you're playing all your other stuff with will be much, much better. And don't forget, as well, this is two notes per string, two pick motions per string, just like the minor pentatonic scale. So, by practicing this simple technique, actually you'll improve the way that you can play your minor pentatonic scale, so hopefully then when you come to soloing and stuff like that, you've got a better technique there as well. Last thing I'm going to show you, same exercise but slightly different thing to do with the right hand. So before we've done alternate picking, strict alternate picking, so down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, keep going like that. This approach is called directional picking or economy picking. Now, what you'll probably find, and what you might have felt, is that when you're doing the strict alternate picking, it's fine when you go in that direction, but when you're coming high to low, you actually have to skip over. So, down, up, I've got to skip over the next string to, I've got to skip over the next string execute my downstroke. So I've gone down, up, skip over a string, down, up, skip over a string, down, up. Now, personally, I don't like that very much. It doesn't feel natural to me. And I kind of fell into uh, economy picking or directional picking by accident. It wasn't something that I consciously did. And now I struggle to do alternate picking because my hand has kind of taught itself to do something different. And that something different is this. So on, on the way down, we're doing down up down up so we're doing strict alternate picking but what happens when we get to the top is a little bit different so we're going to do a down stroke an up stroke a down stroke and an up stroke and that's the same but here's when it changes when i'm moving on to the next string up here rather than doing a down stroke and hopping over i've done a down stroke on the high string and an up stroke but i'm moving up and i'm going to the string above it and actually, because I'm doing an upstroke already, it seems sensible to keep doing that upstroke because then I can go straight to the next string without having to hop over it. So I'm going to show you this really close up if I can. So down, up, up, down. So rather than going down, up, down, up, I've gone down, up, up, down. And then I'm going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, rather than down, up, down, up. It might seem like a subtle difference, but it feels very different with the right hand. And for me, it feels much easier, it feels much better. And the, the basic premise of economy picking or directional picking is when you change string, you pick in the direction that you're changing. So if you're going to a high, a lower string, you'll pick up. If you're going to a higher string, you pick down. And that's it, basically. So. Practice both options, you know, practice the strict alternate picking, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And practice the economy picking, which is the same all the way up and there, but changes there because you're picking with an upstroke. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Practice both of them. 
and see what feels natural for you. And you know what, if you really like alternate picking and that's what you want to stick with, that's fine. If you really like economy picking, that's fine as well. If you can do both, probably the better for you, but actually you want to you want this stuff to be sub become subconscious for you. So you don't really think about it. Because ultimately, you know, once you've got these these techniques ingrained and you don't have to think about them, you won't probably know what you're doing. So when you're playing a solo or you're writing a lick or you play something, you know, somebody might say to you, oh, what did you just do? You're probably not aware of it at a conscious level because you've practiced this stuff and you can do it without really thinking. So that's it, that's the lesson for today. Uh, apologies for lots of talking, but it's important to sort of get these concepts in and understand what you're doing. And when you're practicing these things, you need to think about what you're doing. It does seem like a fairly basic exercise that you know you could do watching the TV, you know, or thinking about something else, or you know, all that stuff. And I guess once you've got it under your fingers, you can do that. But to start off with, it's really important that you are consciously thinking about what's going on and that you're making these measurements of what's happening with your body whilst you're doing this. You know, are my shoulders tight? Oh yeah, my shoulders are tight, I need to relax my shoulders. Actually, my, my right wrist is bending down, my picking wrist is bending, I need to move my arm. And thinking about these things and making corrections as you go because otherwise what happens when you're practicing, you want to practice doing it right, you don't want to practice doing it wrong because otherwise you're practicing mistakes and you're getting better at playing it wrong, which is obviously not what you want to do. You want to practice good technique, not bad technique. And once you've done that consciously for a period of time, actually it starts to become subconscious and becomes ingrained. Which is why you'll be able to do it whilst you're watching the TV, correct, without even thinking about it, because you've learned it already. Like driving a car. For, you know, when you learn to drive a car, everything's difficult. You've got to think about everything. I've been driving for 20 years and you know, you just go, I just do it. I don't think about changing gear or pushing the clutch in or anything like that. And you know, you guys will know as well, guys who've been doing something for a long time, whatever it is, whether it's playing guitar, driving, you know, all that stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna shut up now because I'm gonna go and make myself another cup of coffee. Um, hope that's been useful, hope that's been interesting. I will put some more lessons with regards to picking technique up uh, over the coming months because there's lots of different sort of variations that you can do which train your hand uh, and train your technique will help, and will help you improve your picking technique. Like I said though, remember, don't dwell on these things too much. This is a, a 10 minute a day thing. This is not something to focus on uh, to the exclusion of other stuff. You know, do this as part of your warm up, do this, Play some scales for 10 minutes maybe and then play some music, have a jam along to some stuff, learn some songs, you know, don't just do this. If this is all you do day in, day out, um, you're going to get really good at playing, you know, funny chromatic picked lines, but it's not music per se, it's a technique to help you with your music. Okay, so that's it, I'm going to make some coffee, you guys take it easy, uh, I've been Matt Gear, this has been Matt Gear TV, I will see you next time, take it easy, cheers. <laughs>